Welcome everybody to What Would It Cost Florida with your host Niels Decker and our special guest Mattia, a brand partner of Spark. He's part of the family, but an ex-hockey player, has his own clothing brand, is going to be on a TV show, online coaching. I'm excited to get into it. Welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. Awesome, man. Well, tell us a little bit about your background. All right. So I used to be an ex-professional hockey player. Uh, I stopped playing about five years ago, and then now I do online fitness coaching, and I have a clothing brand, which is Deception. The hockey roots. How did that start? Yeah. So I started playing hockey when I was like maybe four or five. Uh, I did that pretty much my entire life. Got drafted to the OHL, um, played in, in for the Kitchener Rangers uh, for four years. But uh, yeah, at 18, I got drafted to the NHL by the Penguins, uh, played in their farm team for three years, but uh, it ended up blowing out my shoulder like maybe five, six years ago, which is why I had to stop playing. And that probably led into understanding body and health and fitness. Training. Yeah, yeah, it was tough because like when I stopped playing, I was like, it was the only thing I do my whole life. Yeah. So when I got injured, I didn't have a plan B. I didn't have a backup plan. I never thought to myself, what would happen if you know, you got injured and couldn't play anymore, right? Yeah. So there was like a good year and a half where I was just like completely lost, like had no direction. But, you know, today things are great and I feel like things happen for a reason. So uh, when, I'm happy right now. And I, I've heard that about people and I've gone through it personally as well of, of a career change and, and not seeing necessarily a next step because you're so focused on that first step. What were some of the things that got you through or the the things that perhaps were in the way that you discover throughout that process yeah so like the one thing i did after i stopped playing was obviously i took some time off just to reflect on what i wanted to do with my life because i never actually thought about it um there was a point where i was looking at school courses but like literally nothing interested me like and i was not a school guy to begin with even when it came to high school like i just fucking i would only i was just passing with like the bare minimum yeah. because i was so tunnel driven on hockey i knew it was like the only thing i wanted to do so i just didn't care about school so i was never a school guy i looked at school courses and i was like dude nothing interests me mm -hmm. so from there i took some time off kept thinking and then eventually i kind of sat myself down and was like okay well what are you truly passionate about and the only two things i could say i was truly passionate about was like fitness and fashion and i think the biggest thing for me was the fear of getting into a career that like I genuinely didn't enjoy because I see a lot of people like my buddy's parents or you know people that just they just look so miserable with their nine to fives and like I just knew that I didn't want to be that person so uh that's what kind of led me to start the online coaching in my brand nice wicked so so listening to see what it is that you actually are passionate about to transfer that that passion yeah, forward yeah. from what the hockey like like what i do doesn't feel like work to me yeah like it doesn't feel like work so throughout that process were there any people or influential figures or, or things that really propelled you on that journey through the fitness journey not really i just yeah. it was like when i stopped playing it was kind of the only thing i knew i've been training for hockey for like my entire life so it was kind of the easiest transition was starting to train people you know yeah. like i had to do something and training was one of the only things i knew how to do yeah. so i started to train people in person but the problem is i realized that when you train people in person you you can only see so many clients in a day which kind of limits how much you could scale yeah because like at the end of the day you can only see maybe six to eight clients in a day and you're kind of capped out at how much you can make yeah. Uh, but that's kind of what led me to transition online because you're able to scale way more and take on way more clients. Nice. What was uh, when did that kind of click or was it through finding out doing programs for people or meeting with people? It was through that process where you're like, hey, this is not going to work. Or were you kind of right away like, hey, I have a vision. I want to go there or explain a little bit about that process, how that. Yeah. So like before when COVID first before COVID happened, like I was training in person, but um through covid well, i heard a lot of people going online training people online that's kind of what sparked the idea in my mind but i didn't really know how you know coaches train people online i didn't really have any idea how it was done but after you know getting some mentors and and learning and um seeing how other people do it i kind of picked it up on my own and started to make plans for people and then uh i ended up connecting with an agency 
uh, which helped me even catapult that. So yeah, it's Amazing. good. Nice. And what were some of the things to really grow through uh, with people doing stuff online, training them, having them perhaps live through the plans that you have set up for them or were there kind of things you had to overcome with all that? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is that a lot of people like that one-on-one -on -one connection, like in person. So a lot of times I was making the plans, but people were kind of left on their own to like do their plans, right? So that's when I started to, you know, be more involved and because I know I realized people wanted that more of that one-on-one -on -one connection. So now we've transitioned, we do it online, but every week we do weekly follow-up, Zoom calls, FaceTime calls, and then they have 24-7 uh, support through WhatsApp. So that one-on-one -on -one connection is there. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing is following up with the clients, making sure they're doing the, the right things, t eating right, training right, and that on that piece there, when you're talking about not just training, how much part, how much do you bring in food and sleep and all that as well into the programs that you you give to your clients? Oh, it's huge. I mean, eating is just as important, if not more important, than the actual training. You can train five, six, seven days a week, but if your diet's not on point, <laughs> you know, you're going to be training for no reason. So, um, yeah, I think nutrition is super important. Sleep is obviously super important. Staying hydrated is super important. Uh, there are a lot of factors to seeing a transformation in your body. Yeah, amazing, cool. What uh, and the big difference that you're finding here in in Florida because your roots are in Canada as well, yeah. Toronto. What is there any differences that you're finding here in Florida that you wanna wanna share? Yeah, I mean, like for what I do, because I'm like really involved in social media and I push my businesses online through Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff. It only benefits me to be here because at the end of the day, I am selling a lifestyle, right? Yeah. Back in Canada, if I want to shoot photography outside and, you know, make videos and reels like I do every day, it's kind of hard to do it in the snow. You only really have like yeah. three, four months out of the year where you can actually film outside. You know what I mean? So I noticed that just being in Florida alone in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, my views have like tripled, which really is only going to be benefit me in the long run to yeah. continue to grow. Yeah, to spend your uh, your reach that yeah, you're exactly. already yeah, yeah, yeah. to amazing, cool man. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, you also are working on a project uh, with with fashion and and clothing. Yeah, yeah. So I have a Deception, which is uh, my clothing brand. Uh, I run it with my dad and my brother. So we're available um, primarily online. We have a bunch of retailers in Canada, but then we also sell uh, on the Hudson's Bay online store. So, nice. What yeah. what got you into that or what were some of the, the background stories around that? Yeah, so after hockey, I knew that I was really into fashion. Um, I used to buy a lot from brands in the UK, yeah. but I realized every time I would get the stuff, let's say you bought a pair of pants for like $100, when the stuff would arrive, you would get slapped with taxes and duties for like 70 bucks or something like that, right? So I was like, this is so bullshit. Like, like I'm literally buying a pair for a hundred bucks and then spending another hundred dollars on taxes and duties. So I got to a point where I had these kind of like ideas in mind. I thought, you know what, it'd be kind of cool to start like a European slash UK looking streetwear brand, but in Canada, in North America, where people don't feel like they need to order overseas. So that's kind of what led me to start my brand. We do primarily bottoms, jeans, cargoes, trousers, but uh, yeah, it's kind of got that European UK feel. So. I know a lot of people that used to buy from the UK or overseas are now buying from my brand because I'm selling pretty much the same styles, but over here. Yeah, very cool. And uh, for the listeners back home, Mattia as well is our, our brand partner. Yep. And uh, had a, a big role to play as well in uh, in the merch that we have right now. So talk a little bit about that because I love the hats that, that came out of that as well. Yeah, so Nick reached out to me. Um, while back and he was like hey buddy like because he used to buy clothes for me well he still does but he was like hey like uh do you have any connects with some factories we want to make some merch some hats and i'm like i got you man and, and tell us and how did you guys meet so nick reached out <laughs> to me uh while back and he goes hey buddy uh <laughs> he goes, he's like i want to buy some clothes but i don't want to buy it on the site and i was like okay he's like can i meet up with you and pay you cash I'm like, okay. So he told me the items and I met him in front of fucking St. Phillips Bakery parking lot. Yeah, dude. We did like a drug deal. It was like a parking lot drug deal. <laughs> he you comes out of the car with cash and he's with like, With a spro in hand. Yeah, with a spro in hand. And so we did a little exchange in the parking lot. But uh, yeah, it was funny because uh, like as soon as we met, there was like an instant connection. Like we already knew each other. So uh, yeah, I'm really happy, happy to have met him and be a part of Spark. 
so be, beyond that beyond the hats uh give us a little sneak peek on all some of the other stuff that uh, that's going on in the background for the the spark brand yeah so right now we're working on a hoodie as well so like a super nice quality hoodie it's going to be a nice french terry cotton super nice fabric we got some nice embroidery going on so that's one of the designs in the work and then i think for fall we're doing some sort of varsity sport jacket which is also in the works uh we're still making samples so uh but yeah right now we got the hats that uh just landed just finished so we're about to ship those out to the uh to the toronto location yeah very cool yeah we're looking forward and we're gonna we're gonna get creative on some yeah. of the stuff down yeah. here and uh some some ideas like yeah, windbreakers sure. and, and hats down here so i'm looking forward to that as well man that's really cool yeah and uh i mean we're going for one thing or another but uh there's also some stuff coming up on tv for you tell us about that yeah so I did a reality TV show. Um, I was on Bachelor in Paradise Canada, which airs in May. It was a very interesting process. It did definitely take me out of my comfort zone. Yeah, um, yeah it's a little awkward when you're like, at first when you're like meeting a chick, like and you're talking, get to know each other and having that small one-on-one -on -one talk. Where are you from? What do you do? But there's a massive lens in your face. Yeah, Like it's really hard to be yourself. You're just kind of sitting there like fucking feeling all awkward, but yeah after a while you get used to it and uh but yeah it was definitely an interesting interesting time nice cool man well we're excited to see what the hell <laughs> that's gonna look like that would be dope and uh in florida you know home for you is south beach you said right yeah, yeah so right now i'm in, in south beach right right by the water so i love it could get a little crazy sometimes but at the end of the day i'm a beach guy i love the ocean love uh the boardwalk area my dog loves it so it's a good spot for us Nice beauty, man. Cool. And uh, the question that we ask is, what would it cost for people for for any of your service? But I think maybe on the, speak on the online uh, fitness world. Yeah. So I have three different services. So one of them is just a basic plan. So if you want just a basic plan, which is like a custom workout plan, a custom nutrition plan, they start at about thirty five dollars a month. So it's a, sub yeah. a subscription base. Um, the only thing is you don't get the accountability from me. So if you're someone who's, you know, self-disciplined, but you just want like a plan to go by, we make you a plan and you're kind of just left on your own to do your thing. My next tier is one-on-one. -on -one. So if you're someone who needs the accountability, we make you a custom workout plan, a custom nutrition plan, and then I'm going to be there to hold you accountable through the entire process. So, uh, yeah, that, that usually costs 250 bucks a month and we do a four month program because usually four months is enough time for someone to see a drastic change in their physique if they're consistent. So we don't do anything under the, under that. So cool, man. And now are there some personal goals that you're after this year as well? Yeah. I mean, I just want to continue to grow, grow my page, grow my online business, grow deception, grow my partnership with spark. So just growing in all aspects. Very cool, man. Amazing. Well, thank you for tuning in, everyone. This was What Would It Cost in Florida with our guest, Mattia. Until the next one. Yeah.